All right. We're, we're talking about cannibalism, all right? We're getting off of women's bathrooms. I'm talking about cannibalism. This is where I was going. This is where I was going with this, okay? Prostitute tells of surviving crossbow cannibal. When was this written? 2010. All right, so this was, a, this was a hot minute ago. Could a fungal pandemic turn us all into zombies? I don't know what that is, but that is really gross looking. Sex lives of college girls to pop stardom. What the fuck are these articles? A prostitute who had sex with the crossbow cannibal every week for four years says she knows how lucky she is to still be alive. Lisa Thompson said Stephen Griffiths, who has pleaded guilty to murdering three sex workers in Bradford, showed her violent internet pornography of women being attacked, strangled her, and then tried to stop her from leaving his flat. I pray to God every day, says Lisa, 37, 37! What? This, this bitch looks like 60. You kidding me? That's some bad meth use. Holy fuck. I was, I was, oh my God. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to like, I don't know. Holy shit, I'm going, you <laughs> Meth is one a hell of a drug. Se sex sex work apparently ages you at the same rate as being the president of the United States. <laughs> Ziz, drive safe to work, my guy. Drive safe. You've seen 20s on dating apps that looked 40 plus? God damn. I'm thankful that was not me. I really am. It could so easily have been me. I think myself very lucky. The police say I'm the only one who got out of there alive in the last 12 months. It could have been very different. Griffiths has admitted to murdering Suzanne Blamirez, 36, Shelley Armitage, 31, and Susan Rushworth, 43, between June of last year and May 2010. Lisa said that when Miss Rushworth, a former school friend of hers, went missing in 2009, Griffiths asked her if Miss Rushworth's family, particularly her mother and daughter, were upset. That's kind of ballsy, right? If you're like, if you're like a serial killing cannibal and you confront the family and you ask if they're upset about their family member being murdered, that's kind of, that's kind of ballsy, dude. How much you want to bet the dead ones were all lookers? <laughs> Remember, get your vitamins and minerals if you don't want to go the ladies route and don't do meth, dude. Don't do meth. It's Nicole from the Dead Space remake. How did they age her up so much? I don't understand. I found it a bit strange, says Lisa, when Shelly vanished. He said she deserved what she got because she robbed everybody. The Bradford sex worker at Griffiths, 40, was a nice guy when she met him in the city's red light district four years ago. She would go to his obsessively tidy flat once or twice a week for 40 euro... Or, wait, no, that's pound, right? Yeah, 40 pound sex and to do drugs. But about a year ago, she says loner Griffiths changed his appearance and started shouting at sex workers. He shaved all of his hair off and his attitude changed. Baldlets! When will they learn? She added that she thought a prostitute had stolen things from Griffiths and that after that he started to call them all abusive names. Griffiths' large frame and the goth look he had at one time with long hair tied back, sunglasses, and a floor-length leather coat intimidated women. This man literally dressing like a fucking Reddit moderator. Where was, where was his fedora? That was the only part of his ensemble that was missing. But to Lisa, he was originally a gentle giant. So obsessed with cleanliness, he covered most of his furniture with plastic sheeting. I feel like in current year, if I saw someone covering their furniture with plastic sheeting, I would immediately think that there's some like kind of shitty TikTok prankster or they're a cannibal. Like there's no way that people in current year are that obsessed with, with cleanliness. If nobody was even doing that during Corona, like, that's just not going to happen. MG Tao robs us of another one. Oh, my God. Someone didn't watch American Psycho. <laughs> there were so many red flags. What the fuck were they thinking? <clears throat> they were thinking, man, that 40 pounds is really worth it. He had a really nice flat. It was absolutely spotless, but everything was covered in plastic. He said it was because it was new furniture and he didn't want to get it damaged. Even his carpet 
had plastic on it. Most places in his flat were covered. You're telling me. You're telling me even the carpet was covered in plastic and your little woman brain didn't go, huh, oh, that's kind of weird. That's kind of, maybe, maybe the carpet shouldn't have the plastic. I don't know. Maybe I should leave. <laughs> you know, a friend who's 60 and looks like he's 30. Yeah, some, some people are uh, lucky genetics wise like that, you know? He was obsessive, said Lisa. You had to take your shoes off if he made you a drink. You had to have it on a mat. Okay, that's kind of weird. Taking off your shoes before you go into someone's house, that's normal. Like, my grandma had people do that as well. We had, like, a carpet where you would come in, and then you'd, you'd put your shoes on the carpet after you came in from the outside. No shoes. No shoes in the house. But having to sit on, like, a special drinking mat is, uh, that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Women have a rational thought. Have a thought for once in her life. Ain't no way, dude. I sometimes think without Nim's help on occasion. Milk here? The mat is for the drink. If he made a drink, you had to have it on a mat. Yeah, you had to sit on the mat and drink it on the mat. What do you mean? You just noticed the fox has hands. I got hand. I can wiggle. Not that fast, though. It doesn't like it when I wiggle that fast. <laughs> Human coaster. Kusha throwing stones in a glass house. What do you mean? A coaster? A koozie? That's not a mat. What do you mean? A mat is something that you put on the floor. Put the drink down on the mat. He means a mat for the cup to sit on? What? Is that, is that like some fucking British thing? Where you guys don't call it a coaster? You call it a mat? Reading comprehension? That it refers to the cup? I, I thought, I thought like... If he made a drink, you had to have it on a mat. And, like, I, my brain just immediately pictured her, like, kneeling on a small carpet because the carpet would catch the drink, you know? Let's not read too much into the linguistic tics of a junkie, please. <laughs> I mean, that that's not really weird at all, then, if he was just, like, take your shoes off in my house and put the drink on a coaster. I put my drinks on coasters, and I'm not a serial-killing cannibal. That's me being brain damaged. Fuck you. Fuck you, Nim. Nobody calls coasters mats. Nobody calls them that. Speaking of hands, did I know that if I pretend to shake salt on your tongue, your brain will trick you into tasting it? I just don't believe you. I just don't believe you. It could be either way. The wording is nonspecific. We do call them coasters. Calling it a mat is a big weird. Thank you, Xenomorphica. I'm glad someone agrees with me. <laughs> American gets filtered. You and your fucking rooters, you weird bitches. Get on the drinking rug. You will eat all the eggs. You've also never heard of a coaster being called a mat. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. You just got back. Who the fuck calls coasters a mat? That's what I'm saying. That's why I thought like she had to ha sit in a special place to drink. You're with me. It's coaster. Thank you, honorary Floridian British man. <laughs> Unless he had actual eating mats for putting plates on instead of coasters. That's what I'm saying. That's a placemat. That would make sense. He also drank. Oh, wait. Griffith smoked crack cocaine and marijuana and injected amphetamines, often with the sex workers in his flat. Well, at least he wasn't like that other German guy who laced his foreskin with cocaine and killed a hooker that way. Right. I feel, I feel like if you're just injecting amphetamines, you have a lower chance of dying than, than if you're sucking dick that's laced with cocaine, right? You mean like a placemat that also acts as a coaster? It doesn't also act as a coaster! That's different! Is that a thing? Yeah, I've talked about that guy multiple times on stream now. There was a, there was a, there was a German guy who was arrested and jailed, uh, for killing a hooker. Because he, he laced his foreskin with cocaine before she blew him, and she didn't know. Coke cock totally seems like something a German would do. I can't prove that. I don't need to prove that. The guy was already thrown in jail for it. <laughs> that took some real strategy, though. Props, right? I, I wouldn't have even thought that someone would lace their dick with a drug. So, like, now I know. Always check the foreskin, you know? <laughs> Was a German, I cannot confirm that this is common over here. Hmm. He also drank whiskey, brandy, rum, and lager heavily. 
He also had two lizards, one a bearded dragon, which he walked on leads and fed mice from a pet shop, witnessed by Lisa. Bearded dragons are really fucking cool. They're so big and they feel funny. I feel funny. When he got drunk or had a bit of a smoke, he got a bit teary-eyed or emotional, like something had happened in his past. He would try to trick... He would try to say something, but just started crying and shut up. He'd get annoyed and kick you out of his flat. Oh, these are the three murdered women. Someone in chat said that the ones that, that died were probably lookers, and I'm, uh... I feel like he had a type here. I feel like he had a type, and it was not beautiful woman. <laughs> Because all of these women look like men. <laughs> DSL? You're, you're telling me this David Bowie looking chick on the left has DSLs? Are you blind? They got like wispy ass lips, dude. Is that David Bowie? See? I'm not the only one. For 40 pounds, you get what you can get. You get what you deserve. Never trust a person who keeps cold-blooded animals. What about me? I keep Otz as a pet. <laughs> Why are the Germans like this? We've been allies in both wars and we still don't get it. I'm sure the really good looking ones are more expensive than 40 pounds. I don't know. Maybe these are the really good looking ones. It is England after all. David Small Lips. Pepsi had more sugar, so you probably have increased risk of infection. You're trying to clean out wounds with Pepsi? What is happening? What is happening? Although Griffiths pulled Lisa's hair and pinned her to the bed, leaving bruises, she wasn't concerned for his safety until two months before his arrest. It was then that he started to show her even more violent internet pornography. I was shocked. I actually threw up. He was getting a kick out of it. Lisa says Griffiths then got violent and she wanted to leave his flat. I was trying to get out of his flat. It got a bit forceful. He had his hands around my neck. Luckily, I managed to get away. I got dressed and left. All right, okay. If she had time to put her clothes on, he wasn't really trying to stop her from leaving. He wasn't really committed to killing this one, all right? Like, if you were really in fear of your life, you would just run out of that apartment whole ass naked, all right? Being, being outside in the nude is a little bit less worse than just being murderated. <laughs> Can't just judge by your local hooker prices. I'm fairly sure a good looking one is five times that. I've seen what goes on national television in Naked Attraction. Okay, all right. God, I want to watch Naked Attraction. <sighs> it's a good excuse to streak. <laughs> I said I wasn't interested anymore. And when I next saw him, he asked why I hadn't been around. I said, I told you the last time I saw you. And he started calling me names and shouting after me down the road. I just kept on walking. He said he was doing a criminology course, said Lisa. He said it's amazing what people can get away with. It's not a red flag at all. He said he could do anything to me when I was in his flat. It did unnerve me because he could do absolutely anything. She adds, I hope he gets a long term. I hope he's safely in jail after what he did. The only thing he could do now is let the families know where the bodies are. But he likes the upper hand, and he'll take that to the grave with him. I feel physically sick about what he's done. Jail's too good for him. He's very intelligent. He knows right from wrong. So he knew what he was doing. But... That didn't tell us much about the crossbow cannibal. I wanted to know... I wanted to know about the crossbow cannibal. The Bradford Martyrs. Chilling story of Stephen Griffiths, the crossbow cannibal. Okay, all right. Let's open. Let's open this link. Oh, kind of, kind of looks like if Darkside Phil lost weight, doesn't it? That's uh, is that foreshad? Is that what they call foreshadowing? Scammed article. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that one lady's opinion. I wanted to know about the murderer. Holy shit, it's Phil. <laughs> this is this is what happens when he doesn't get any donations for an entire stream. <laughs> if he's a cannibal, doesn't that mean the bodies are eventually in the toilet? Yeah, I don't know what she's saying. That's why I had to scroll back up. I was like, I thought, I thought this was an article on cannibalism. What do they mean? I mean, I guess he could have buried the bones still. Stephen Griffiths of Yorkshire, England murdered three sex workers 
all of them with a crossbow between 2009 and 2010. Three, three people, hold on, three people took him like a year almost. It was like 10 months, I think the other article said. And we're supposed to, we're supposed to believe that the Idaho killer killed four people, four people in 20 minutes and then left the one roommate who saw him alive. We're, suppo we're supposed to believe that? Something is not adding up to me. For skinning. The camera's been on the whole time, dude. After killing them, Griffiths would dismember them, eat parts of their bodies, and then dispose of the other parts of the bodies in a nearby river. During his final murder, he was caught on CCTV footage, which at point, he turned around and flipped his middle finger to the camera. This was the footage that eventually led to his arrest. Twigger warning, violence and death. And this is a 2022 article. No wonder the how. How do you read the title of an article about the story of a crossbow cannibal, and and not immediately think trigger warning in the first place? Like, if you if you click onto this article and get upset about the gory details of a cannibalistic murderer, I feel like that's on you, actually. Idaho killer victims were in AOE range. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. But he had a knife. He wasn't using AOE damage in the Idaho killings. And I also feel like it's it's bad. Like, he killed four people in 20 minutes. That's fast. That's a hell of fucking fast. And then he left a witness that literally saw him. Like, ain't no way, dude. Ain't no way. Just like the dead space. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me there's fucking trigger warnings in dead space. I hate current year. I hate other human beings, dude. My man's used whirlwind. Ah, help! Mm. Mm. Oh my god, why is there cannibalism in the cannibal article? Most serial killers that achieve worldwide infamy do so by adding some defining characteristic to their murders. Some have a particular thing that they leave behind at the cr scene of the crime. I can't English today? <clears throat> Sort of like the playing cards left behind by the Joker from the Batman series. An, an odd thing to use. Well, why wouldn't you just use a, a, an example from real life instead of using Batman? Like you could have even like linked to a different serial killer. Anyways, others dress themselves up in some sort of way, such as John Wayne Gacy, who became notorious for his clown costumes. Others have a signature murder weapon, like the bolt pistol, a weapon used to stun animals before slaughter, used by Anton Chig... Chig... I'm not going to finish trying to pronounce that. In no country for old men! Stephen Griffiths, a serial killer who murdered three women in 20, 2009 and 2010, preferred an equally terrifying weapon, the crossbow. While many serial killers become infamous for the number of people that they've killed, Stephen Griffiths gained his notoriety for other reasons. First of all, he killed his victims with a cross. Is this a fucking is this a fucking AI article? Am I reading an AI article right now? Secondly, he showed no remorse whatsoever for what he had done after he was caught. In fact, he seemed proud of his actions, even giving himself the nickname the Crossbow Cannibal. If he gave himself that nickname, why did you all continue fucking using it? You literally gave this man what he wanted. I don't understand. Plus, after he was caught killing his third victim on a CCTV camera, he proudly brandished a middle finger directly at the camera lens. Stephen Griffiths also seemed to be a student of serial killing, idolizing past murders, studying criminology at university, and even claiming that he wanted to become a serial killer before he ever killed. How are you gonna, how are you gonna describe this man as a student of serial killing. That sounds really fucking weird. What the fuck? Chat GPT articles from news outlets soon? I know, right? It's just, it feels it feels fucking odd. Despite the do you see how greasy his hair is actually? Hold on, wait a minute. Like, I can't tell if that's too much gel or if he just hasn't showered in like a month. That's kinda gross. This article sure is sucking his dick pretty damn hard. Yeah, this is like... <clears throat> this is like a glowing article for a cannibalistic killer. I don't... Is it... Was this written by a woman? 
Joseph Sherwood? Okay, this wasn't written by a woman, so I don't I don't think he's sexually attracted. Look Look at this man's face, dude. Joseph Sherwood. Are you a student of serial killing? You got a you got you got a face that says, "Man, I would love to eat some women and not in the sexual way." Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. It's 2023, a man can be attracted to men. That's not what I'm saying. It's typically women who are attracted to these kinds of psychopaths, all right? Gay gay men have slightly higher standards. <laughs> gay gay men have slightly higher standards, dude. I'm not going to stay off the furniture. You can't tell me what to do. Greasy hair man. Despite the horrific nature of his murders and cannibalism, what may have been most terrifying was his attitude of ruthless indifference toward human life. Griffiths idolized serial killers the way other people idolize famous singers or athletes. He thought of killing as an achievement. Ayo, hey, Xbox gamer? In my opinion, it's this attitude toward murder that makes the story of the crossbow cannibal truly terrifying. Uh, it was a frozen food. His father was a frozen food salesman. His mother was a telephonist. What is a f fucking telephonist? His parents divorced when he was 13. Don't really care about his backstory all that much. He would shoplift from stores, steal from classmates when he was 17. He used a knife to slash the face of a store clerk that tried to stop him from shoplifting. He got three years in youth custody for that. Wow. Three years in youth custody. I didn't even think he could have a knife because he lived in England. Stephen Griffith divulged to prison guards and psychiatrists that he fantasized about being a serial killer. This probably should have been warning enough to keep Stephen under close surveillance. But after a sentence was complete, he was released back onto the streets. Oh my god, he really is just missing the fedora. God, I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. Shouts out to Kirsha. What are you shouting out? I'm shouting out at you, Pearl Have. What's happening? This really is a Reddit article. You just been gross ogre. I agree. <laughs> you mean telephone operator? That's not what the article said. Telephonist is an operator of a switchboard. Oh. Telephonist kind of sounds cooler than telephone operator, though. Makes me think of the fucking Beyonce Lady Gaga telephone song for some reason. In 1989, Griffiths was sentenced to 100 hours of community service for carrying an air pistol, which he used to kill birds that he would later dissect. Not a red flag. Not a red flag at all. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Again, this is classic serial killer behavior and probably should have raised red flags. Then in 1991... He was diagnosed as a schizoid psychopath. Hey, we know a few of those. We know a few of those guys. In 1992, he was sentenced to two years in prison for holding a knife to the throat of a young girl. Hold on, wait a minute. So actually disfiguring someone got him three years, but then holding a knife to the throat of a little child only got him two? So, like, he didn't even have, like, an attempted murder charge or anything? It was just... Oh, you know, that's okay. You can hold the knife to the child. It's only two years. No big deal. No big deal. Get out. Li literally, he was on our radar tier, honestly. <laughs> UK literally had a confession that he wanted to be a serial killer and went, nah, just let him go wild. You know, they needed they needed some excitement, right? I mean, like, I, I can't even make the joke that they were having too much knife crime from other people, so they needed to have, like, this dude do it. Because this was, like, ages ago. This was, like, in the 90s. And then it was about 2009 to 2010 that he, he did the hooker murders. He was too slow on the quick time event. God damn. After he was released from prison this time, he really ramped up his interest in serial killers. He began taking out a bunch of books about his favorite murders. A personal favorite was Peter Sutcliffe, the so-called Yorkshire Ripper, who was convicted of the murder of 13 women, most of them sex workers. In 2001, Griffith stayed up or started buying up a bunch of pet lizards, including a four foot long monitor lizard. Dude, monitor lizards are terrifying. Every time monitor lizards are mentioned, I just think about that Florida man who owned like four, I think it was. I think it was four monitor lizards as pets. Uh, and he died in his apartment. I don't remember how, maybe it was an overdose, but he died in his apartment. He had no friends or family, so no one went to check on him. And after he didn't show up for work for an elongated period of time, Police did a welfare check on him, and not only was he whole-ass dead, but the monitor lizards had been feasting on his corpse. 
And I think it was suspected that the monitor lizards might have killed him. Maybe? I'm gonna have to look this up, because I'm not remembering it. Hold on, we're gonna- we're gonna side tangent here. Okay, we got- we got real distracted. We got real distracted from this cannibal, dude. <laughs> One witness also claimed that he saw Griffiths eat a live baby rat during this time period. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? At least- at least when, like, the Koreans do the eating the live seafood stuff, there's no- there's no, like, bones in it, right? Like, rats have bones. During this time, he was also very active on the internet, downloading violent pornography and leaving foreboding messages on his MySpace page, on which he went by the alias Ven Pariah, a character from Demonology. Man, considering, <laughs> considering the porn stories I talk about, I would hate for someone to have to, like, go through the shit that I've seen and be like, what was wrong with this person? How did they not murderate anyone? Maybe Filthy Frank was trending back then. I miss Papa Franku. Stephen Griffiths was a student of serial killing. They've said that already. They've said that. This, this has to be an AI article. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way a human wrote this article and did this much repetition. He read true accounts of serial killers incessantly. He read fictional novels about serial killers. Many quotes from these real and fictional serial killers, as well as his own twisted thoughts, were posted all over his Ven Pariah MySpace page. This MySpace page seemed to be an expression of his violent alter ego, one that would eventually take action. In fact, the night before killing one of his victims, he posted, What will this pseudo-human do, one wonders? Poor Steven pretended to be me, but he was only the wrapping. He knew towards the end that I supplied the inner core of iron. Hatred bound tightly in flesh. At very long last, the time has come to act out. That was actually surprisingly well written for a psychopath. I'm gonna be real. I, hey, yo. Hey, yo. Surprising? <laughs> For about a decade, Stephen Griffiths moved about the streets of Bradford, befriending the sex workers. One of the sex workers who worked in the area at the time remarked that Griffiths didn't seem like a dangerous man. However, during this time, he had been plotting his crimes. Look at that crossbow. Look at that fucking crossbow. In 2009, he invited Susie Rushworth, a sex worker from the area, back to his apartment. He then shot Rushworth with a crossbow, killing her before dismembering her body in his bathtub. The next year, he would do the very same thing with his second victim, Shelley Armitage. It is believed that he would keep parts of his victim's bodies to eat later, sometimes cooking them and sometimes eating them raw. Oh, could you imagine eating human flesh and meat raw? It doesn't, it doesn't, like, I don't think I could do that. I feel like raw human meat would feel really bad, like have a really bad texture. I don't like that. The parts of the bodies he didn't eat were put into garbage bags and tossed into a nearby lake. The third and final murder of Suzanne Blamirez was a little bit different. Griffiths held Blamirez hostage in his apartment for two days. However, she was eventually able to break free from bondage, at which point she opened the door to the apartment and ran down the hall. Unfortunately, Griffiths chased her into the hallway, crossbow in hand, and shot and killed her as she tried to escape. However, as Griffiths turned around, he noticed a CCTV camera that had captured the entire incident. He casually walked past the camera and flipped his middle finger in a manner that seems almost boastful. He then gave Suzanne Blumirez the same treatment he gave the others, eating parts of her and dumping the other parts in the lake. I want... I want to play... I want to play this so bad, but I can't. After the murder of Blumirez, the caretakers of Griffith's apartment building reviewed the CCTV footage, saw the hideous crime that had been committed, and immediately alerted law enforcement. Shortly after, the police raided Griffith's apartment, where he was waiting calmly for them to arrest him. Inside the apartment, the police found remnants of the victim's bodies, as well as photos of the victims, one of which clearly depicted the dead body of Shelley Armitage in the bathtub. After his trial, Griffiths introduced himself as the crossbow cannibal. I'm sorry, I said after. I meant at the trial. And showed absolutely no remorse for the crimes he had committed. 
He seems to have no concern for his fellow human beings and has even said, I'm a misanthropic. I don't have much time for the human race. In December of 2010, Griffiths was convicted of all three murders and sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order, which means he has essentially no chance for parole. Since being imprisoned, Griffiths has attempted suicide several times. You were taking a nap and heard me scream your name. Also, you don't eat people. Aww. Are you, are you saying that me me screaming your name is uh, something, something you like waking up to? <laughs> we use pigs to grow heart valves for transplantation. What? What? You were joking. You didn't think he'd actually do it. What do you mean? What do you mean? That is a nice crossbow. Please don't hunt humans. You know, an artist who does lace beautifully, but unfortunately she isn't taking commissions. I really want this artist to do my Daki Makara art. I, like, I, I really want it. I'm probably going to have to pay like an arm and a leg for it because she, she doesn't like doing Daki commissions. But holy fuck, I want it. You take... Uh, uh, uh. He tried to eat himself. <laughs> There's human beings that you have no regard for either, but they chose a path on their own to cause that. Yeah, exactly. Only one specific context you can think of in which it would be a delight to hear me scream your name. And you're not going to tell me about it. You're talking about him eating her raw. Oh, yeah. I was not expecting that to happen. That's kind of fucking weird. <clears throat> That's kind of fucking weird. All right, we're going to go to the penis one. We're going to go to the penis one. Suspected sex worker cannibal chops off John's penis to eat. I found it. Okay. <laughs> a homeless gigolo chopped off a 68-year-old Bronx man's penis and left him to bleed out and die Saturday night. A neighbor found the victim lying on his side in a bathtub on Sheridan Avenue in Claremont at about 8.30 p.m. Cop snabbed Jerry Pagan. Fuck you, Jerry! 32, believed to be a prostitute who has had sex with the victim in the past near the scene. <coughs> Police believe Pagan chopped off the victim's penis during a spat over an unpaid debt. The suspect told detectives that he snipped the man's genitals with scissors... The cops also found several knives out in the kitchen. Pagan also told cops that he wanted to eat the penis, police sources added. Police, police said Pagan faces one count of murder in the gruesome slaying. This was also a very short article. But he just, he just wanted to eat the penis. He didn't actually eat the penis. That's kind of, that's kind of rough, dude. That's one hell of an opening line. Holy shit. Yeah, right? That's kind of nuts. Uh, do not, do not pay homeless gigolos to suck your dick. That's what we've learned. Please don't eat the peen. <laughs> yeah, help. I mm. think he might have been fucking around. I don't know about that. That definitely brings eat a dick to a, to a new plane. This is what I talk about when I say I'm going to eat a dick. <clears throat> going to fucking cut it off you. Chop it up, saute it in a frying pan, some garlic, some oregano. We go taste delicious, dude. He's probably got a taste for it. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it, dude. All right, what's, what was the next one I opened? Accused cannibal charged with eating grinder dates genitals doing court. What is it? What is it with gay men and wanting to eat people? I've, I feel like the majority of cannibals we've talked about have a proclivity for penis. And I just, is that, is there a, is there a correlation here? Or is this just, is this just coincidence? Please don't braise the penis. <laughs> My pronunciation of oregano causes you pain. You're welcome. Appreciate that. I would not eat spam. I'm not a spam person. Also, I literally cannot stop coughing. I'm sorry. Reminds you of the cannibal of Rotenberg, Armin Mayweis. So eating a penis is a USA thing. Uh, what? No, Armin Mayweis is German. What do you mean? What do you mean? Most most cannibal stories have come out of Germany. Though America's catching up very quickly. We wanna we wanna we wanna like give you a run for your money, Germany. The man accused of slitting his victim's throat, hanging him from his basement ceiling, and eating his testicles. In a grisly Christmas Eve murder, 
will return to court early next year. Oh my God. He just wanted some balls for Christmas. He was so sad and now he's happy. Merry Crimbo. Hard agree. Grilled pineapple burger sounds fucking great. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be a mess, but like it'd be good. It'd be good, dude. Mark Lutunski allegedly confessed to the disturbing 2019 killing of 25-year-old hairstylist Kevin Bacon, who he met on the dating app Grinder. Bacon was found hanging naked by his ankles from the ceiling in Lutunski's home in Brennington Township, Michigan, on December 28th. Aw, that house is really cute, too. That's unfortunate, dude. Evil does exist. Oh, wait, hold on. I missed a sentence. He allegedly cut off a part of Bacon's genitals and ate them, according to court documents, which is how his parents learned about the details of their son's murder. Evil does exist, and it touched us, Bacon's dad, Carl Bacon, told the Associated Press in a January 2020 interview. It's gut-wrenching to hear the details, and we're beside ourselves. It appears Bacon knew that Latunsky had a violent sexual fetish, according to the court documents. What was released shows that Kevin had a dark side, Carl told Fox Detroit in 2020. He obviously got into something that he wasn't prepared for. I'm going to remember him how everyone else remembers him. That he's a good person who is passionate and cares for people. Latunsky has been in a Michigan jail for about two years while the pretrial process unfolds and is scheduled to return to court on February 3rd. A judge ruled that he is able to stand trial in October 2020. Bacon met Latunsky on Christmas Eve 2019 after the two allegedly connected on Grindr, a dating app for gay men. He was reported missing the following day. Bacon texted roommate Michelle Myers at about 6 p.m. the night he went missing to say he would be out for a while. I'm just in shock about the whole thing, Myers told the Michigan news outlet. It's just hard to process. Court documents revealed the horrifying details of the murder and that Latunsky would sometimes stop taking medication for mental health issues. His estranged husband told WJRT last week that Latunsky didn't act like there was anything amiss after the murder. An April 2021 Rolling Stone article reported Bacon struggled with depression, poor self-image, and was going through family troubles at the time of his murder. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, getting your testicles chopped off is probably a pretty good cure for all of that, honestly. With a name like Bacon, I wonder if he tasted the way he was named. Myers, Bacon's roommate, told Rolling Stone that he met up with family members and learned that someone he didn't want to see was coming in for the holidays, so he was looking for a distraction. That led him to browse through Grinder, where he met his alleged killer. He turned down game night with Myers and other friends to meet with Latunsky for what was supposed to be a quick hookup, Rolling Stone reported. He never returned. Hookup culture's grotesque. You're either, you're either, you're either gonna fucking fuck up your pair bonding, get some bad self-esteem, and come home with an STD. Or maybe not even come home at all. You might just get murderated and have your fucking testicles chopped off. You've heard seven degrees will get ready for the two testes of Kevin Bacon. God damn. The house will never be sold. It'll be demolished. I'd buy that house. That's cute as fuck. He just wanted to eat some bacon. He misunderstood that the killer meant I will literally eat your ass. Right, dude? Turn down game night. Kind of earned it. What the fuck? Also, look at this beard. Can you imagine eating ass with a beard like that? How grotesque. How disgusting. Hey. Police found him in Latunsky's basement on December 28th. Latunsky was arraigned on December 30th for murder and dis disinterment and mutilation of a dead body. He did the thing! He did the thing. That's kind of that's kind of nuts. That's that's kind of nuts, dude. Huh? That was very unfortunate. Japanese cannibal who got away with eating and raping a Dutch woman is dead. Wow! What a happy ending. <laughs> Banana so small he could tie it off, dude. Yay, dad! probably him trying to deep throat it as a bootleg dildo that accidentally swallowed the I don't think you could accidentally swallow something that large right even if you started swallowing it you could just like put your hand in your mouth and pull it out right right 
Five bucks, they were practicing blowjobs and choked, couldn't pull it out, and had to swallow the banana. How fucking room temp IQ do you have to be to accidentally swallow the fucking banana? <laughs> what the fuck? Issei Sagawa admitted to killing his classmate so he could taste her flesh, but loopholes in international law let him walk free. What? He didn't even get fucking jail time? Hold on, wait a minute. There was even rape in this one. That guy, fuck that guy. Oh, you know this guy? He had zero repercussions for his crimes. Yeah, apparently. What the fuck? Considering the man ended up in the hospital, you think the evidence of his room temp IQ-ness is kind of strong? It's not the kind of room temp IQ I enjoy, though. He's not, he's not in the running. Got away with murder. Got away with murder? Cannibalism? Rape? Your dad made fun of you for falling asleep in your chair last night? Good! Maybe you'll go to fucking bed for once! <laughs> he actually had a weird cult following of weirdos who loved him. He looks like someone who would lead a cult. He's just- he's just got the face for it, you know? Vid isn't gonna get nuked. You're on the drive home. It shouldn't get nuked. I don't think I've said anything, uh, crazy. Well, I mean, I've, I've probably said some weird things, but nothing like, you know, vod calling worthy. He made money on writing a book about eating and raping the poor woman. Why- why are people like this? A Japanese cannibal who admitted to killing a woman in Paris and then defiling and eating her body without ever serving a prison sentence for his crimes has died, his brother confirmed on Thursday. Issei Sagawa, who died at the age of 73 of pneumonia on November 24th, gained international notoriety in 1981 after he brutally murdered his classmate, Rene Hardevelt. The then 32-year-old was a PhD student in comparative literature at the University of Sorbonne and was obsessed with tasting human flesh. Nobody believes me, but my ultimate intention was to eat her, not necessarily to kill her, Sagawa told Vice in a 2009 interview. Remember when Vice actually did things and they weren't just a uh, how many how many objects can I stuff up my asshole website? He wanted Hardevelt to let him taste a bit of her flesh while she was still alive. Though he explicitly confessed to his gruesome crimes when he was caught by French police claiming, I killed her to eat her flesh, Sagawa never served a prison sentence. Loopholes and in international laws allowed him to walk free right up until his death. When he was arrested by French authorities, examining doctors declared him legally insane and unfit to stand trial, thereby leading authorities to deport him to Japan. But when Saga was sent to Tokyo Psychi Psychiatric Ma Matsuzawa Hospital upon return, doctors there gave him a different diagnosis. Psychologists found him sane and determined that he murdered the woman, age 25, solely out of sexual perversion. Yet because the charges against Sagawa in France had been dropped after he was deported, Japanese authorities couldn't access sealed court documents and were unable to charge him without evidence. In the years since, no notable efforts have been made by authorities to charge Sagawa for his crimes. That is fucked up. That is hella fucked up, dude. What? It's not, it's not even a Japan what the fuck. It's a France what the fuck. Japan wanted to charge him, but because France had dropped the charges... The records were sealed, and France wouldn't release them. Fucking France, dude. It was basically a fuck-up in the court files. That is nuts! The Japanese definition of sane must be quite crazy. Don't you mean the French? The, Fren the French were the ones who deemed him... Oh, yeah, never mind. Never mind, I got that mixed up. You're right. You're right. I fucked up that time. Yeah, the, Fr the French deemed him insane, and then the Japanese were like, Nah, he's sane. He can, he can stand trial. Italian ending! What the fuck? What the fuck? In later interviews Sagawa conducted with the media, he explained that he had been fascinated with cannibalism since the first grade. When he'd stare at a male classmate's thigh. He also partook in bestiality with his dog! Japanese men fuck dogs! It's not just white women anymore! <laughs> France is also famous for giving children to pedophiles in order to cure them of Nazism. What the fuck? Karo-san, no. He has tried to eat people before, but was scared to follow through. In Paris, he lured sex workers to his home almost every night, but failed to kill anyone. Until he met his Dutch classmate, René Hartevelt. How bad? 
how bad do you gotta feel that like he lured so many sex workers home and was unable to kill them but you were the weak link you were the one weak enough to actually get murderated by this dog fucker <laughs> the bestiality is spreading that was germany not france what are you talking about vash pp germany's not been mentioned in this article at all unless you unless you meant the like the pedophile thing to cure nazism I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So like, I don't know what country did it. If if it was real, you did mean that. Okay. Well, so many things going on. Maybe sane wasn't quite the right diagnosis either. Well, sane sane's definition is like you you are aware of your faculties and you know what you're doing, right? So like, if this guy if this guy was just like, yeah, I know it's wrong to fuck dogs, but I just want to put my penis in them, or like, yeah, I know it's wrong to kill women and then eat them but like i just wanted to that's sane that like he understands what he's doing and so he is fit to stand trial in like in like the legal sense you know the germany thing is a well-documented event what the hell what the hell i hope we i hope we find a more humane way to rid our children of marxism honestly <laughs> In terms of trying to push sickos, having really high standards for being insanity is a good thing. Yes. Yes. I can't stop scratching my throat. It's so itchy. Oh my god. What did you stumble into? Uh, we're talking about cannibalism a little bit. I don't know how we got here, but... I was I was reading a necrophiliac article and then we got distracted by cannibalism. The innuendo setup is too easy. I've been talking about how my throat's been really itchy while I'm like fucking healing from this cough, dude. Don't use a banana. I don't even have bananas right now, dude. Pretending he needed to help learning or pretending he needed help learning German, Sagawa invited Hardevelt to his apartment. He said he chose her for her physical beauty. A quality he felt he lacked as a man with small hands and measuring under five feet tall. That is a small man! That is, that is like the king of manlets! Oh my god! <laughs> How do we cure Marxism? Easy, have a loving two-parent household. That's impossible in America. <laughs> After attempting to murder her once, Sagawa killed her on June 11th, 1981 creeping up behind her as she was reading poetry to shoot her in the neck with a rifle he'd bought and kept hidden. There are conflicting accounts about how he obtained the gun, and he fainted at the sight of her pooling blood, he said in later interviews. How did- how is this man obsessed with wanting to eat human flesh, but then faints at the sight of blood? I, I just... What? After waking, Sagawa raped her corpse. Of course! What? What is a cannibal story without a little bit of necrophilia on the side, you know? He then ate parts of her flesh, both raw and cooked. Why do these people keep eating raw flesh? It doesn't feel like it would have good texture. It doesn't feel like it would have good mouth feel. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. Holy shit. I hate it. I hate it. The king of manlands is at least 5'5". Five, five. That's a child! <laughs> it's a sushi thing. Oh, uh, you know, that's true. He is Japanese. Maybe maybe that makes sense in his case. If you're already that far, might as well try. Fuck, dude. In for a penny, in for a pound. Guess he wanted to experience both textures. I mean, I guess. I, f I fucking guess. Several days later, when her body started decomposing, he put her in two suitcases and dumped the bags in a lake in a public park just before sunset. Two joggers who saw blood dripping from the suitcases alerted the police. By this time, Hardevelt's family had reported her missing. Man, imagine how many, how many like corpses have been found by joggers on accident. If you, if you become a jogger as a hobby, you're probably also going to accidentally stumble upon a corpse. There's a very high likelihood. There's a huge, huge correlation apparently. Kind of sound like Daria's friend. I haven't watched Daria in so fucking long. I don't remember what her friend sounds like. <laughs> Joggers unite, dude. Honestly. 
Sagawa made a living on his infamy after checking himself out of the hospital on August 12, 1986. Once the Japanese legal system couldn't charge him, he enjoyed about a decade of fame in Japan, where people were fascinated by his gruesome story. Sagawa wrote books and drew manga about his actions and cannibalistic desires. He also enjoyed a stint as an on-screen celebrity, starring in several pornographic films where he reenacted his crimes and appeared on cooking shows eating raw meat. He also sold nude paintings of women. All right, so I kind of... I kind of I kind of want to find his pornography. I'm kind I'm kind of curious what the stage value in this actual unironic murderer, cannibal, necrophiliacs recreation of his crimes and pornography are. Why Japanese people? That sounds like a variety circuit. The French are bad. Oh no. Oh yeah, that's true. I did forget Dogfucker, but I don't think he recreated that crime. It doesn't mention that here. Sagawa had been living with his younger brother in Tokyo and had a stroke in 2013. He admitted in 2009 that he still fantasized about eating a woman's body, though he claimed he'd never act on what he called simply a fetish. Didn't he already act on it, though? Didn't he already act on simply a fetish? Let's, uh... I, I guess I can give him props here. At least he can admit it's a fetish, right? He's, he's leagues more sane than quite a lot of people in current year, if he can at least admit that it's a fetish. If a normal man fancies a girl, he naturally feels a desire to see her as often as possible, to be close to her, to smell her, and kiss her, right? He said in the 2009 Vice interview. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> 